Hello, this is Pastor Doug with the ministry cross online ministry crossandblood.com. This is the first and will probably be about three mini videos titled How to Receive a Prophetic Word. Glory to God. Something that needs to be out there, needs to be taught today in the church. It's out there, but it needs to be taught out there a little bit more. Prophecy is alive and well on the planet Earth, church, in the name of Jesus. Scripture says that the church of God is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Scripture does not say, it's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, that the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, and teachers. It says apostles and prophets is the foundation. Read it in Ephesians chapter 2. Paul also refers to it, hallelujah, in Corinthians when he talks about apostles and prophets and begins to go into a list. Why is it emphasized and highlighted in Scripture so much? It's emphasized and highlighted because apostolic changes regions and changes people, and the devil hates it, and true prophetic ministry demonstrates the kingdom of God, and the devil hates it in the name of Jesus. So apostolic and prophetic is something that the Lord is putting on the earth today, has put on the earth today. Watch out, it's coming, and it's here. This ministry operates in prophetic. You can see i got my little notes here. Glory to God. Got a lot to say. This ministry operates in true, accurate prophecy. Hallelujah. Um, the, the function of this ministry is not 100% prophetic. <laughs> we have an online church, a worldwide church. We have free online Bible studies. We are here to preach the word and change lives and change people. However, one of the functions that we do have is fully prophetic. So you can receive prophetic words directly from our ministry if you would like. Part of why this teaching on how to receive a prophetic word is going out. Hallelujah. Go to crossandblood.com. Type in cross and blood in Google, one word or three words, however you do it, you'll find it, you'll see the links. You'll also see the other links for a ton of stuff that we have that we can minister to you. Help us to help you. We're here for you in Jesus' name. Also, this um, little script I'm reading from here, once again, crossandblood.com. Follow the links. Go to the Get Ready Now blog. You can read this whole thing, pretty much what I'm going to be reading to you right now. But we're using every rooftop we can find to get the word out there to edify the body of Christ, among other things, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God, there's software up here talking to us. Hallelujah. So, what do you do? Hallelujah. When you receive a prophetic word, glory to God. The person receiving the prophetic word can often, now you will get a little bit more life out of it here than if you just read the page, but you can still reference it over there. It's Get Ready Now blog. Hallelujah. When someone receives a prophetic word, the person receiving the word can often have a part to play in that prophetic word. Are you listening, church, in the name of Jesus? Proper receiving and acting on prophetic words can accelerate the time in which it takes some words to come to pass. Scripture refers to the, and the fact, and it says that we should look, and, look for and hasten the day of the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Not every single thing up in heaven is already set. God the Father is very, very omnipotent. Glory to God. And he can determine times. Hallelujah. There's seasons and then there's specific things according to the hunger of the people involved. So let's continue. Scripture basis is that we can hasten the coming of the day of the Lord. Just that scripture off the top of my head. Besides that, you have 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, that where Paul speaking says, We as workers together with him, who's the him God, urge you not to receive the grace of God in vain. You've got your part and God has his part. He is faithful to his word. He will bring it to pass. However, as workers together with him, how fast do you want to help the Lord bring that word to pass in your life? You have got some action. You have got to put behind some things sometimes in the name of Jesus. When Jesus looked at that man with the withered hand and he said, stretch it out, that man could have sat there all afternoon long looking at Jesus and blinking his eyes. But when he stretched it out and did some action, that's when the healing started. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 14, God said to Moses, stretch forth your rod over the sea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that Red Sea did not part, if you read it in Exodus chapter 14, until Moses was faithful and started stretching his rod over the sea. So if you receive a prophetic word, you got to take that word and you got to stretch it and you got to put some action if you want to hasten the performing of that word in your life in the name of Jesus. 
So proper actions can help accelerate words. Now, there's different types of prophetic words that you can receive, but in general is what we're talking about. A lot and most prophetic words, your actions determine the timing of those words a lot of times. Improper actions when you're receiving prophetic words, hallelujah, can delay the fulfillment of those words. So you've received a prophetic word directly from this ministry or any of the other multitudes of ministries which are out there. Look for the fruit in the name of of Jesus. There is the true and there is the false. The Lord has sent prophetic on the earth. People have picked up on it in the body of Christ and other places. The seances and the and all those funny fortune tellers and all that, they're all trying to pick it up. But there is a true prophetic on the earth and there's a multitude of us out there doing the prophetic and the prophecy. Good, bad, ugly, middle, all over the place. I could begin naming names of some fantastic people that we know that do prophecy accurately, hard, and work hard at it besides just this ministry in Jesus name so there's various levels of true prophecy out there so you received a prophetic word from this ministry or for any of the others that have true fruit behind it and a track record that you know thus saith the Lord is happening to you what do you do now what do you not do what next here's the teaching in Jesus name letter a all prophecy all prophecy prophetic words should really line up with things that the Lord is or has been dealing with you personally on or instructing you on or leading you towards anyway and already. Hallelujah. Upon the moment you got saved, individual listening to me now, John chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus speaking says these words. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit has come, he's going to guide you into all the truth. He didn't pick it out and say this one gets it and that one doesn't. He says he's guiding you, church, into all the truth. He's not going to speak by himself what he hears from heaven. That uh, whatever, he, whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come, words of knowledge in the name of Jesus. So upon the moment of salvation, that grace, if you want to call it that, immediately begins to kick in in the lives of individual believers. Hello, church. This needs to be taught in the name of Jesus. One of the biggest problems I hear across the years of ministry is what is God saying? What is God saying? What is God saying? Individual believers are not preached at and taught that they can hear from God themselves. They may not have a prophetic mantle upon themselves, but the witness can be on the inside to know what thus saith the Lord with a green light or a red light on major decisions in their life. He did not leave you comfortless. Glory to God. So upon the moment of salvation, this grace kicks in in a believer's life. Whether or not you're called into the office of a prophet, this is scripture for you, not not just a prophet. This script, this scripture, as a matter of fact, was quoted in an entire passage where our Lord is talking to his church, hallelujah, his disciples. It's not, for example, where Paul is explaining how to operate in the gifts of the office of a prophet, like in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Look it up, you'll find out. Therefore, the grace of the Holy Spirit's individual leading in a person's life begins immediately. You may not have fully seen on the inside what was spoken to you by prophecy, glory to God. You may not have understood the directions, the urgings, the promptings, and all those things in the dreams that the Lord was trying to get through to you already. You may have had a lot of crud you've had to work through. You may not have been taught about the difference between soul and spirit. You may have had bad doctrine that you were raised in, all kinds of things that I've seen, but that does not mean the witness of the light. It says in the Old Testament, behold, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. And scripture says that the Lord watches over his word to perform it. If he said he's going to lead you and he said he's going to guide you and when you got on your knees and you accepted Jesus truly into your heart, that's where he went by his spirit and he's been leading you, pushing you and guiding you into truth ever since you let him in in Jesus' name. So he is speaking to you, listening now in the name of Jesus. Jesus. You may not have understood the directions, the urging, the promptings that the Lord was dealing with you before any prophetic word you may have received, but after you receive an accurate true prophecy, you should have some questions clarified and answered that you had before the prophecy. These may have been things that you just simply did not know, were not um, known to you, uh, emphasized to you, or clear to you, but true accurate prophetic ministry is going to shine light on stuff that's going on on the inside of you and cast off a whole lot of darkness. Wisdom wisdom's going to come, you're going to say, oh, I see in Jesus' name. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 3. But he that prophesies speaks unto men to edification, to exhortation, and to comfort. 
Comfort, number one. I want to pull out that. I was wondering if that was the, what the Lord was telling me to do. Comfort, yes. Exhortation, exhortation edification. A prophet's going to comfort you and say, yes, that was God in Jesus' name. Or the Lord may have been telling you, for example, kick up your prayer life. Get in there. Get serious. Repent. Do the first works you did. Those kind of things. The Spirit of the Lord may be pushing you to that. Well, that's where the prophecy of exhortation comes in, just as an example, exhorting you onto bigger things and better things, putting some fire down on the inside of you, saying, hey, pay attention to this. And then also edification, just plain building up. Edification, building up. The definition of the word edification, prophecy, true prophecy is going to edify, exhort, and or comfort. Hallelujah. And edification is something that's going to build you. You're going to make it. You're going to be everything God says you're going to be. May not have a whole lot of detail to it at the time, but the force and the fire and the umph and the witness of God's going to come on you. And when true prophecy comes out and you hear, I'm going to make it, and that business that God told you five years ago to start, God says, says the Lord, you're going to have it come through and come to pass. That kind of edification is, will come out in true prophetic ministry and prophecy as well. So now within this going on, there are some things that may have been spoken to you about very clear direction or something that's going to happen in your future that apart from the prophecy, you would have had no way of knowing what was going to come to pass. True prophecy often can and will. It says that when we prophesy, we prophesy in part. We don't know all of it. What we hear, we speak. We've just attuned our ears to hear to be able to speak and have the faith to do so through experience. Glory to God and through a lot of hard experience in Jesus' name. So you're also going to, in true prophetic, get words of knowledge, things. Um, hallelujah. You're going to have four people come to you in the next week um, in your bunk at the Marine Corps barracks. Hallelujah. And, they're, and you're, your job is to witness to every one of them. All of them have people at home praying for them. And it's going to be four of them in the next one week. And God's leading them to you. You get that gospel hook ready. Word of knowledge as an example. So within prophecy of edification, exhortation, and comfort, there will be and should be often words of knowledge as well. Look for them. That's how that works as well in Jesus name and then when they come to pass you know a prophet has spoken because they've come to pass next point under the heading the way the Lord has conformed the body is such that there are times and seasons that if you listening to me now are going to get all that you are supposed to get from the kingdom of heaven from your born-again experience I just did a message about seeking and hungering for apostolic ministry my gosh in the name of Jesus blog talk radio go take a look at it if you as a believer are going to get everything that you're going to get from the kingdom of heaven, there are times when you're going to have divine appointments. When what you're supposed to get will be wrapped up in a moment of destiny with another believer. It's called the body working together. This applies not only to prophecy, but it applies to a host of a whole bunch of other spiritual things that forces us in the body, like Ephesians talks about, to be interdependent. I'm not going to get to my destiny without you doing your part when you're connected with me and vice versa. No, I don't connect with every single part of the entire body in the name of Jesus but my gosh there's parts of you that need to come to me to, to, to sustain life to bring life to me to give me words to give to give us help to give us support and vice versa it's an interdependent thing and part of what happens because the Lord has ordered the body in such a way in a true apostolic ministry and a true apostolic last days church in the name of Jesus there will be new believers coming in that need some help and some need some push and need some edification some exhortation or some comfort I have seen churches glory to God where they are prophets and, and what they do is they let the prophets speak they don't line up the prophets every single day every single service and um, let the people to stay in milk and, and have everybody talk to them all the time and not do any work themselves but I have seen churches glory to God where when new people come in, what they do after the worship is they say, are you new? And they don't let them know what's going on. And they bring the new people up front and they bring the three prophets in the entire ministry up front and begin laying words and knowledge and prophecy all over them. The people, the new people fall down on their face, like scripture says, and they know that God is among you. Hallelujah. The purpose of prophecy. And they get saved if they haven't been. They, they rededicate their life if they haven't been because the prophetic is a function in the church that should be happening now. Glory to God. There are times and there are seasons where you will hear from heaven that you're supposed to be connecting with a prophet or with prophetic people to encourage, to edify, to exhort, and to comfort your path in the name of Jesus. Don't run from true, accurate prophecy. Run to it. It's from the Lord. 
Now that's not to say you go get a, a, a word every every five days. You need to grow up yourself. But the purpose of prophecy is edification, exer exhortation, and comfort. It's a tool in the body of Christ that when used accurately help builds up the body of Christ according to the pattern, way, and function. God designed it to work. Look for it. Don't run from it. In Jesus' name. Last, for sake of time on this video, probably do about three. After an accurate, true, prophetic word to you, you will have that on the inside of you. Quote, I know that was the Lord talking to me down on the inside of you. Now, if you don't have that witness after you receive a prophetic word, glory to God. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 says, The anointing which you received stays in you. And you really, 2.27, 1 John, don't need any man to teach you. As that anointing that came down on the inside of you and you said, Jesus, come in. In Jesus' name, forgive me of my sins. He is faithful to run on in because he is seeking whom to save in Jesus' name. As that anointing teaches you of all things and is true and cannot lie, as it has taught you, stay in that anointing. If you've got Jesus on the inside of your heart, you've got a little light, you've got a little witness that reacts when God talks in Jesus' name. So the last, after you get an accurate true prophecy, you will know something down on the inside. Sometimes people fall down on the floor, sometimes they get excited, sometimes they kind of blink and then look like a, the deer in the headlights, and after about an 20 minutes or so, they go, wow, that was God, wasn't it? It depends upon where they are with the Lord. But there is a point in time when you hear from God, there's something down on the inside of you itching, saying, okay, God, that was you, and you cannot get rid of it. That's the other point on teaching true prophetic words. Now, if what has happened is you got a supposed prophecy and you don't have that on the inside of you three, four, five days later, and God's still not talking to you about what was spoken, then you just need to pray about it. You need to pray through it. And you do what his leading is telling you on the inside to do, church, in Jesus' name. Not what the false or the fleshly word may have been telling you to do. Oh my gosh, in Exodus chapter 15, Moses is screaming. And he says, I wish that all God's people were prophets and were prophesy. The heart of the Lord is for everybody to be so close to him that they don't need all these little offices and functions. And they just hear the voice of their father, their, their um, husband. And he whispers and we say, yes, Lord, and we do it. But that is something that we all have to grow up into. So even a dog knows the difference when it's being petted by a neighbor and when it's being fed. Glory to God. Your spirit on the inside of you is the same with your heavenly father. Learn, develop, and grow in your relationship with your heavenly father. Use prophetic ministry. Use prophetic preaching. Use prophetic worship to guide you, lead you, instruct you, and comfort you in what your father is telling you to do in Jesus' name. And you can and will get to a point where you will know that that was him, your father, talking to you or if it was not in Jesus' name. Ask, uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 9. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you, church. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Father, I pray for every single person that ever watches this uh, little mini video here on Ustream, now, or on Archive. And we pray for anybody in the name of Jesus. Those listening now who listen and connect with us through the ministry or through YouTube or any other avenue that this video goes to. Touch them, anoint them, prosper them, help them to hear what does say the Lord. Whether they get a word from us, fine, a word from somewhere else, fine. Help them to not be scared to reach out and ask for words through any means that they can get in any way. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we increase the faith of everybody listening to this little mini video now in Jesus name we rebuke you devil with your blinders and your darkness and your doubt and your unbelief and your confusion and your smoke and anything that in any way is trying to hinder God's people from receiving what God has for them now in the mighty name of Jesus we don't have a whole lot of time on the MIDI video we want to try and make it short so it doesn't overwhelm people we expect two more parts coming out glory to God on how to receive a prophetic word this is Pastor Doug Hallelujah. Online church ministry every single week, 3 o'clock on Sunday, plus a whole lot of other stuff we do, and the God's bringing down the pike in Jesus' name. My name is Pastor Douglas Rookie. Find us through crossandblood.com. How to receive. We have a lot we can help you with. Look it up. How to receive a prophetic word. This is part one. Parts two and three are coming, Lord willing, in Jesus' name. We love you. Keep on rowing that boat. We're getting to the other side of that lake in Jesus' name. God bless. Bye-bye.